Hello, welcome to IMHO. In my homosexual opinion. I'm Darby. And I'm Alexis P. Bubbles. The P today stands for protein. You know what I learned something? You know what I learned this week actually? Was it about protein? Uh-huh. If you eat breakfast, you have like more energy to deal with bullshit during the day. I didn't know that that well, was real. I thought it was an urban legend. But the way that you learned it through My Favorite Murder. Oh, because the cortisol levels. Yes, okay. Okay, okay, okay. We're both trying it. Are you doing breakfast? Yeah, I'm doing it. Well, I mean, I did have Girl Scout cookies for breakfast before I had my coffee. It doesn't matter. You have to have something. Okay, so we learned through the 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 hit show, what is it called? Podcast. My favorite murder. Who learned on TikTok about cortisol levels? You're supposed to eat before you drink your coffee. You're supposed to eat and be awake for like an hour and a half before you drink your coffee. Because if you go straight to coffee, you're just going to be anxiety and like ugh all day. And so I tried it. My day was instantly better. I can't say that I've seen the same, but again, I'm eating what's basically a spoonful of sugar. Well, it helps and the then cortisol I'm coffee. levels yeah, go down. Go down, which is, the, which is great. Those were the original days. But yeah, you should Not be eating in the that. morning. I hate it, but you should. It's very hard. It's very hard to find the time. Not me, because my husband makes me breakfast every morning. He'll just text me and he'll say, will you eat? And then I say yes or no. And then he'll bring me, I usually, I have apples. Eggs, hard boiled, cock, a little bit of peanut butter. On his birthday, maybe. <laughs> Do you want breakfast? We're like, oh, it's your birthday. I just, yeah, I'm, I'm hungry, hungry for cock. I, I put on Sex in the City r right now, like when I'm doing my makeup or whatever, and I just got to the episode where Charlotte's dating the guy who's uncircumcised, and he decides to get circumcised for her. No. Broad City. I mean, it happened in the show. Broad City. Have you seen Broad City? Uh huh. Guy that plays gay guy who I don't think is gay in real life. No, he's not. He's hat. He now. menu. He the menu. Oh he, no. He gets circumcised. Oh, in Broad City. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, I can't get a boner, and I'm like, I don't think you can control. Your body has to get boners, okay? Yeah. For you to know that you're alive, or other people's bodies get boners because of you, and that's how you really know your worth. Now listen, this week, this week was a busy week. Oh my God, I have so much to tell you. What? Okay, I was so just the talking other day, about me. You had, you did. I stuff have things this week? to tell you. Like what? Okay, well I called my mom the other day, okay, and bragging. I could hear that she was in the middle of a drive-through exchange. The drive through said, like, the drive through guy said, have a blessed day. And I said, have a blessed day. He said, my pleasure. You must be at Chick-fil-A. And she just started laughing. Laughing, laughing, laughing. Because she was. And she knows that when I catch her at Chick-fil-A, she has to vent mommy money. Because yeah. that's her little deal. Well, she's supposed to send money to trans charities. But she's the ultimate trans charity. <laughs> so she sends it directly to. So she sends it directly to me. Yeah. And then another thing happened. Okay, I was waiting after work to get on the bus. And I was on the phone with my friend Patrick. I call him when you don't answer their phone. So all the time. Thank you, and Patrick. And we were chatting and this guy who was holding a beer. Hi. We're like, the bus is opening up. We're getting on the bus. And he goes, oh, look at you. And I was like, uh-huh. Why wow, you look all fancy. You look like an opera singer. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I guess. And I was what like, do do? I was like, thank you. And he goes, so what are you up to? I was like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm on the phone. Instant. It was like a classic cliche, toxic masculinity, man. Cause instantly he's like, well, fuck you. And he got all angry. Well, he wanted to hear an aria. It's not often that the bus stores part and you see what is going to be a live concert experience. <laughs> And then she says, no thanks, I'm yeah. on the phone. You should have said, yes I am! And then, listen, left. And then I waited for, and then and I then turned wait around and I waited for the next bus because I didn't want to get on that, that bus. With it. Okay, here's my thing. You gotta feel safe on If the I bus. get speeded, mm -hmm. if speed happens towards me, I don't want to be on the bus with that guy because then it becomes about him wanting me to sing or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> we lose sight of the bomb. We are solely invested. <laughs> and in he wants me to sing journey. the Queen of the Night. I haven't sang that in years. No, no, no. Not since or we flute lost Whitney. or whatever. Yeah. Well, good for you. Thank you. <laughs> now, I <laughs> had a busy week. <laughs> Whitney? Yeah, Queen of the Night. You got the Not that one. That the, the aria, the Queen of the Night from the Magic mm, Flute. Not familiar. <laughs> now, while you were busy this week getting on and off of the bus, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, 
we had a house guest. Curtis's sister was in town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got to see a lot of different parts of LA that I don't know. Oh, you got to play Taurus. I got to, yeah, it was fun. And we went to comedy show. That was oh, we fun. did go to the comedy concert. That was so fun at the typewriter or whatever. Oh my God, we went to Dynasty Typewriter to see this untitled improv show, which is always really funny. But the guest that they had this week was a guy who was on Murder, She Wrote. Okay, he was on a lot of other He played the okay, Olsen twins' but, dad. But what did he talk about? Oh, my God. He got up. The first, the first thing, thing he, he talked about is my parents didn't believe I was a real actor until I was on Murder, She Wrote. And then I was hard the entire rest of the night. Because then they talked about Murder, She Wrote. And then they talked about 9-11. And then they talked about 9-11. <sighs> I mean, it was a laugh a minute. Don't get me wrong. It was really Unlike funny. the real 9-11, which was a bummer. <laughs> But this was really funny. Anyway, it was just, it's fun to have my partner's supportive family come to town because it reminds me that they do exist. Supportive yeah. family members do exist. Mine? Not not right now. But eventually, they're not they supportive, will die. they're so poor. It is. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Well, actually, before that, we got to be on Mano Agapian's podcast, Drag Her. Oh, yeah. And that was really fun. It was a full day of, We got know, to go to the studio. We went, we went to the HeadGum studio in Wicker, It was so in cool. We got, we got <laughs> in Wicker Park. Co cold in brew Silver on tap. We, we walked drank in with full with cups coffees, of coffee. And then we refilled on that. And, and I, I got to say, you know, my cortisol levels. <laughs> <laughs> But then we sat down on a very low to the ground couch and I was immediately like, oh, I can't talk. No, but it was really realized, fun. It was no, really I know, fun. but don't put me on a couch. It's your fault. I have, I have sleeping. Unless it's a casting couch. And, and then, then let's talk. put me on my back. Cause I'm willing to do anything to get the roll, mister. Anyway, as many of you know, Paula does our TikTok. I want to congratulate Paula and, of course, our incredible comedic timing. We just had 150,000 followers on TikTok. Oh my god! Which means something to someone. So thank you to every someone that thank made that happen. Thank you to everyone who's ever followed us and clicked that like button, the heart, and shared. We're gonna actually going to turn that into a TikTok, and it is going to tank our account. I had Paula make a TikTok about me talking about being California sober, mm -hmm. where I'm on my gummy journey, which, checking in, it's still going amazing. But, <laughs> you know, people love to be upset. If something they see on the internet is not particularly directed at them and their point of view, it's wrong, and they need to be upset about it. Which I appreciate, because I have that exact... Uh, listen, I'm not throwing stones. Well, I am. But my house has two different panes of glass. One's a safety. Somebody commented, <laughs> someone commented, you know, the term California sober makes light of the real difficulty of living a sober life and blah, blah, blah. Basically saying, saying California sober mocks the sobriety of actual sober people. And so I responded, because so my husband's sober. I'm sober with my own addictions currently. Don't, don't tell me about, shut up. So I responded, you need to touch some grass, but don't smoke it, silly goose. <laughs> <laughs> silly goose is silly the best Silly goose is ever. the best name it's so it talks down to them but in the silliest way their response can only be lol you're right yeah it's not going to be no no um, no because everyone you know yeah what is it called internet mind or whatever um mind hunter no what is that called chronically online chronically online yeah yeah, yeah which yeah. we all are except me because we are back to storming in la again imho is breaking weather records here in los angeles and so we've had another big storm and our internet got knocked out oh i have I'm... not had internet for two days oh god yeah. you okay i am because i have at&t but curtis has verizon and this part of studio city is a verizon dead zone okay Wait, are you still on your family plan? Yes, but I've already looked into it. I'm getting a new number in March. Okay. No, yeah. no, I think that's sickening that you're not speaking to your family, but there. <laughs> <laughs> I say you hang on to that shit as long as you can. Okay, I'm not talking to my mom anymore, but I'm on her family We're plan. We're protecting her peace. Yeah, I'm protecting my peace because I've already, I've got another Debbie and she eats a yeah, Chick-fil-A. Yeah, she's wonderful. Well, except for the Chick-fil-A thing, but it's fine. I've been on the same phone plan with them since 2000. One. I've had this phone number for 20 something years. Like, Are you in charge of that? Did you make the calls or whatever? For what? For the towers? Nobody did call a couple of the families. Cause you know I have a really beautiful 
sing people often think I'm an opera singer. And they so, think I look like an opera singer. They yeah, know so, you sound like an opera listen, singer. Listen, team. Yeah. So anyway, I am gonna get up a new phone number though. I did look into it already. I love it, that's fun. And I don't think you should rush on that. Well, except because our internet went out, I've had to set up my phone as a hotspot since Curtis has shitty service. So we have been using data nonstop. Hell yeah. And I don't know if she has unlimited data or not. And this is gonna be my like final, final fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Mom. And also we just wanna give a quick shout out to this bear. Oh yeah, speak about it. We are going to see Cocaine Bear as soon as we finish filming this. Like we are gonna wrap filming mm. and run. Alexis did ask if I was going to bring this to the movie and I was like, no, because it would mean interacting with people. Although it could be, you know that TikTok of like, one ticket please, and they say for what movie and it pans and it's a guy in a Spider-Man suit. That could be you with this. Fuck. I'm taking it to the movie. <laughs> So we will be seeing We'll bring a big bear. bag and then you can hide it in And there. we will be talking about it next week. So you need to get, go see it. Can I tell you, I went and saw Ant-Man Ant -Man and Wasp or whatever, Quantum Physics. Mm -hmm. And you know at our movie theater, there's, the, sta there's the, the electric stairs, whatever, that go up. But they're always... So I was going escalator? to the... Escalator? Were you trying Thank to say you. escalator? Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's escalator, but it's not always on. And so I just automatically go to the elevator. And the elevator is right by the entrance. So I go up the elevator. The elevator opens. Cameras flashing. A huge crowd of people. <laughs> there is a red carpet. She's here. She's here. There's a red carpet right next to the elevator because they were doing a special showing of Big Trouble in Little China. And the original director was there. And all these actors... And and all these amazing like glitterati. What is that? It's a movie. From when is it new? Big Trouble in Little China. No, it's like the 30 year anniversary, I think. Oh. Or Who's whatever. in it? Don't, I don't know. Don. I think it's Kurt Russell or something. Was Kurt Russell there? I, I, could, I didn't see him, so I don't know. Goldie Hawn? But it was all, no. I don't know if it's Kurt Russell. But it's a, it's a, <laughs> movie, it's a movie, you've never heard of it. Well, Big even Trouble if, in Little China. Even if Kurt Russell wasn't in it, I would still ask you if he was there. It was. I, I do, I would like to see him in person. Yeah, KR, we love. Yeah. So, so there was just, it was just to have, I, like, I don't get, I don't get shook at that much. What do you but do? The elevators opened and there was literally bright lights and cameras and a crowd of people in gowns, beautiful gowns. Beautiful gowns. And, and a red carpet. It was very insane. And then I went and saw, I went and saw Ant-Man Quantum Physics and I saw it in 40X. That's my new thing. I love those chairs because they go, Yeah. I had a box of Raisinets and I had it kind of tucked into my purse because you have to hold on. It's not like, whoa, it's like. Like the Avatar ride? Yeah. I've never written it. Anyway, I go to the bathroom. I reach in for my box. The box is empty. And I'm like, where'd the raisinets go? Because I didn't yet finish them. The seat was bucking so hard. All the raisinets flew out onto <gasps> the ground. When the lights came up at the end, I was like, <gasps> all of them. And you still ate them. Well, yeah, I'm not going to waste raisinets. Right. You know what I mean? Anyway, raisinets do come from the ground. Ashes to ashes, raisinets to <laughs> raisinets. Raisinets into the ground. No, but I had a ball. Good. Speaking of balls. <laughs> I looked at you and I was like, surely she's not, but you did. I have to say it. Okay. Speaking of balls, let's take it to RuPaul's Drag Race, season 15. Okay, no, this is a big episode. This is the 200th American oh regular my gosh. drag race episode. Oh, wow. 15 year anniversary. 300 queens, 97, 97 guest judges. <gasps> I mean, you know who I so saw? many. Someone posted a picture the other day on Twitter, and I went, oh, Ariel Versace. She was on Drag Race. You know what? I saw her, and I went, I love her Instagram. Oh, wait, she was on Drag Race. She was on Drag Race. Because there's so many drag queens. Rebecca Glasscock. And thank God we did get a little bit of talking about her this episode. Now, the thing about this being the 200th episode slash 15th anniversary is, is we got to take a to nice reference. roll down memory lane. Yes. Memory lane. No. And it was really beautiful. It oh. was. And Lux, what? Huh? No. Oh. I meant, was trying to do uh, that thing where we were going to talk at the same time, but it's it just has to happen. Yeah, you can't think through. Listen, this being our fourth year, fourth <laughs> season, fifth season, I forget you make it up. Also, our 200th episode. Are you trying to put your fingers in my mouth? <laughs> Ew. Y'all couldn't tell, but I was pushing against her hand. I was just Sorry. giving you a solid... 
I was giving you a solid place to buy. But, <laughs> okay. I love a reference, and I also love Lux Noir London has been she delivering. She has studied. She has studied. Drag and not race. just this episode. She is constantly referencing. So That's I thought fun. it was very apropos that That's she'd fun. be there because we know she's going to reference, and she did. She referenced a lot, as she always does. Yeah. That's fun. We do get a mini challenge, which we <gasps> haven't gotten. We haven't gotten in a while. One. It's a photo booth, photo bomb. Were you a little surprised we got a mini challenge in a 41 minute episode that is a ball? Yeah. I was like, I can't believe of all episodes they're gonna do a mini challenge right now. We're they managed see a to fit a lot look. in. Well, the cast is smaller, thank God. Yeah. But yeah, so they have to do that thing where they pose and then Rue pretends to take a picture and then they put them in a scene. Have you ever, okay, when we used to work in Chicago. Heard of it. And there used to be photographers. 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 I loved going around and photo, cause they would never want a picture of me. So I right. love going into the background of every picture I could and photo bombing. Did you ever do that? No, they always wanted to take pictures of me. But very poorly lit pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so we get the mini challenge the mini and challenge. They, they're going to be plugged into what they say are some of the most iconic moments of the last 200 episodes. And then they pick the most random moments of the last 200 episodes. I was like, wait, what? Oh yeah, what? what are some of the iconic moments? But but like one of them was Rue on the judging panel, judging the ESPYs or whatever they called them. ESPN. She ESPYs. did look really beautiful in that. She did, but is that an iconic moment? Wait, what is some iconic moments? Well, on Gina, they mentioned it later, but on Gina. Um, Will I'm throwing up. And there's some really iconic moments that would have made really funny photographs, but instead they're like, <laughs> remember when Rue wore gold? Like, <laughs> what was that? Oh, that's funny. It was weird. Then what are we doing? We're getting ready. Oh, trauma. Anitra's trauma was really sad. Yeah. It starts off with, do you have any gay siblings? Do you and have any gay siblings? Not that I know of. Possibly. Mm. Not Your for dad, lack of trying. Your dad did love oh. to sleep around. Listen, you know. If you ever did a 23 and me, Bitch, it would be on. Oh, I'd be related to everyone. Yeah. I, I am 100% certain that there are kids wandering around with my receding hairline, and I know that they're my brother's sisters or siblings. Ooh, what if all the people dad had out of wedlock, ugh, I felt like a Republican saying that, all turned out to be trans. <gasps> what if my dad's the ultimate trans ally? Fuck. Hang on, let me call him. Oh, that's my phone. I know, he has me blocked. Yeah, so then we find out Anitra, like, her mom finds out. She's... And then does takes these backsies and says, you can't actually live here anymore? She says, well, yeah, she says, live your life however you want. We love you. And then a week later, she says, you have to get out because you're making everyone uncomfortable. That's Yikes. weird. Okay, as someone with supportive parents, what does it feel like watching that? I'm not by any means uh... a good person. Well, duh. I'm not saying my parents are not supportive and great. I do feel like that all sort of happened after. So growing up, right. I did not feel that. Now, I wasn't in an abusive situation, just kind of mentally and emotionally. I just knew that it would be over if I was truly to live by myself. I just yeah. kind of felt like I couldn't. So I have a lot of trauma from that. So when you say my parents are supportive and they're lovely people, they mean well, that all kind of happened after. Yeah, you went through it. Um. What was your question? <laughs> How do you interpret so that, that makes me so It just makes me so sad and it reinforces go. that if you put conditionalities on your children saying, I love you, but only if, then you don't, you shouldn't be having children, A, and you don't, you're not a good person. Now, parents are not good people just automatically for being parents. So it's fine, your parents are human, they're not perfect. That's a hard lesson to learn. Some of us learned it early, some of us still don't know that. Your parents are just people. So this is just really, really sad. My heart went out to Anitra. And I hope she's in contact with her brothers because hopefully they're normal. I had the exact same reaction you did as I was watching it. And perhaps because I've recently gone through this with my mother, not her exact situation, but I've shut off communication with my mom too. And I just kind of want to leave in everyone's mind, your parents are still human adults. They are just adults who fucked that doesn't automatically make them good. And it doesn't automatically, God, this is so dark. It doesn't automatically make their love, make them unconditionally loving people. It is because I came to a realization at 
38. I know, took me a minute. My dad was easier because he's so overtly everything. He's overtly racist. He's overtly homophobic. He's overtly just a bad, bad person that I was able to kind of make excuses for my mom in that like, well, but she loves me unconditionally. She's my mom. Moms love their children. And I do believe my mom loves me, but do I believe she loves me unconditionally? No. Mm -hmm. I don't. I do often think she chooses her comfort over me, which putting your comfort level over your own child is that true love. To me, I don't believe that to be the case. So I just want to like leave everybody with meet your parents where they're at, cut them some slack, obviously, because they are just human beings. But also don't, don't, don't feel give like them you free have passes. To, that, that's exactly right. Like don't, don't feel like you owe them anything. They can still be shitty people or they can still make really bad decisions. Ultimately, I think we're all entitled to some grace from one another. And I do think we could be a little more graceful. But after they keep showing you who they are, wander off. Yeah. It was a really lovely silver lining though that Anitra got to go be in touch with her biological father. Yes, and she said and, that she's so happy now. She and she's life. happy. She that did say so she nice. has a partner and I'm not really crazy about that part of yeah. it, but I'm happy if she's happy. And but we don't know the situation. They could be fully open. They could be desperate. We don't know the situation. Mom, well, no. let's be honest. Shake could be my child. I could be the mother that kicked her out of the house. You know what I mean? Just age-wise. <laughs> I would never kick someone out of the house for that. Other reasons. Yeah, for less. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. So let's, <laughs> let's jump into this because let's it is the ball this. challenge. It's a ball. They have to make something out of crystals. They have to do all these different outfits. They have to make something out of crystals, which... Uh, have questions. Yeah, we'll get to it. We'll get to um, it. But first, RuPaul looks absolutely stunning. She looks Are you so kidding me? cool. With the fringe and, and the, the leather. leather red leather, leather yellow it's, leather. And it was so shiny. And Julia Garner, God bless it. her. Added nothing to this episode, but I love her. I loved her accent the entire time she invented Anna. You know what? She invented a new accent. You know what? That bought Madonna biopic is scrapped or whatever. You know that there was a big Madonna boot camp with her and the other like new it girls. Oh yeah, to see who would be Madonna. To see who would be Madonna. Yeah. She won and now they're scrapping it. Show us the footage. I wanna see the Madonna boot camp. I'd watch 200 episodes of that. I don't know what boot camp is. Now the first category is reimagining the drag race drag suit or whatever tracksuit. We've seen Rue in it through a hundred thousand promos and we saw it with the Racing promotion stripes. of season 15. Yeah. They were back to the... Oh, back to Cars. Yeah, they went back to Cars. I, I'm gonna say it. Cars is a good movie. I'm sorry. I'll never forget one time at a club, South Beach in Houston. It you was got hit 18 by and car. No, I met a man. He was French. And his name was Tilly. Oh, was he the little, isn't the French car that little one that replaces tires? No, 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 oh. no, his name was Tilly. We met on the dance floor and after that we would always go to House of Pies. We went to House of Pies. We were having pie, getting to know each other. I was 18 at the time, he was 33. And when he found out how old I was, he was shocked. Which how old actually you think he you were? now makes 14? me kind of sad. Yeah. It's... Like, no, I think he thought I was gonna be older, but that doesn't make sense either. No, it does. Anyways. Let me think about it. Anyways, so yeah, then we decided, but we did decide to go on a date because he was French and I, I'm not dating American. You knew um, that was going to be your storyline. And we decided to meet up to see a movie and the only movie time that worked was Cars. So he was like, <laughs> he was kind of shocked and upset that I was 15 years younger than him. And then we went and saw a child's movie and he was absolutely like no touching, no kissing. I never heard from him Speaking again. of grooming, did you see that TikTok or that Instagram of that youth pastor who celebrated that his girlfriend was finally 18? That's every youth pastor. Yeah, but like, I'm just, I'm just saying, did you see it? Up first is Mistress Isabel Brooks. She's doing the classic, but she's got all these quotes. She looks incredible. Oh yeah, she put on quotes of all the other all big, the big girls. All the big girls. That was funny. That was great. Loved it. Spice. Uh, cute. It's the same. It's shit. the same, but yeah, but it's but cute, it's and she's got her own branding. She's got her dingling, she, she dinged her or whatever. Yeah. Is that a chevron? I don't know that that's her branding. Didn't she say that's from a thing? Did she? What's her song about? in the first episode? Hi, my dingling. Okay, that feels like it was ten years ago. I have to be honest with you. I'm. <laughs> it's been a long yeah, time. It's been a while. Lux Noir London looking so cute with the pink Power Ranger. I mean, these all I, none of these. Overall, 
Great. After seeing the season 15 promo where they revisit all of this, this particular category was a little less exciting because it's like I we've already seen about them the do promo. this. I she literally is holding the flag in the promo. So she, when she walked out, I was like, <gasps> That's the girl from the poster. You know what I loved is Marsha, Marsha, Marsha's Rainbow Eleganza. I thought this was so cute. The pastels. Oh, I love the colors. I found it very annoying. You know but what? I did like she her face. Was, she was wearing more than one color, and I think that was exciting for me to see. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you worry. In the next round, she takes it right back down. No, I know. I love, I, I you know I'm a Marsha apologist. I of love course. Marsha. I just thought this was so cute and a fun interpretation of a NASCAR. I agree. I just, much like Spice, I'm like, wh what else? Selena's titties, cute. She more like the people that's going to change the tire or a racer. <laughs> yeah. Because don't they wear those jumpsuits? Well, everyone does, I think. You know those roads or whatever are so sticky? Well, so the cars don't fly off. <laughs> yeah. Right? It's like flypaper. Yeah. It's like when I was roller skating on that carpet. That's what it felt like. Yeah, but they're actually doing it with other people and everyone notices that they're there. <laughs> <laughs> Ah! Malaysia baby doll? Baby doll. Baby doll bags. I thought she looked great. She looked exactly the same as she has this entire season. Yeah, but I think it looks, it's great. Lucy LaDuca. I, I loved this. It I was loved this weird, too. And I loved it. Was, it. it was cool. It was like a, one of those other kind of Teletubby shows where the characters are weird looking. Oh, where they eat each other. You know? Oh, and Sasha Colby. This was my favorite, I think. I love I love the idea this. of making it a gown. Yeah. But also, it still looked like... Like a race... It was... You could see what it was. <laughs> mm -hmm. The race cars. Yeah, yeah, I could see her stuck to that road. Oh, she would be so fucking stuck. She would be, bitch. She would be so fucking stuck. She would stuck. be so stuck. Anitra, green... Oh, and I loved the moment of the, you know, the, the sentimental things on that her That was moms. sweet, especially after hearing about her mom and stuff. Still to, honoring to her history, even though her mom's a fucking cunt. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say that. But yes. Next round is your favorite ball. Oh, yeah. What was your favorite, your favorite ball favorite going ball. through? Okay, when I heard what the category was, my first thought was like, Fuck. I don't remember, listen, I barely remember the episode after I watch it. Let alone, like, years later, asking me what my favorite ball is. Yeah. I don't know, the last one? Was that a good one? I like bag, ball. I guess ball ball is the funniest. Like I mean, I ball. do remember, ball I do remember candy ball, because that was iconic. Yeah. I told you about my brother's friend who had three balls for a minute, but it turns out it was a hernia. <laughs> He's okay. I told you about my friend who got his balls twisted. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I bet people who watch the show regularly, they're like, yes, yes, we, yes know. we know. I know, I know. I'm so sorry, <laughs> Every everybody. time we think we about having a, a podcast, lot. we don't have I'm a like, lot. what the fuck are we going to do? Well, no, we can start. Here's our problem. Narcissism, okay? We were told it's out, but I think it's very much still alive and well at IMHO. We need to start talking about things that don't involve us directly. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like uh, politics, you know, how we're not affected by it. Okay, here we go. Balls. Mistress Isabel Brooks, beach ball. Loved. Fierce. Amazing. Incredible. Marsha, 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 bag ball, milkmaid. Cute. It, it, I agree. It was the same as what we've been seeing and not as like that sparkly or anything. But how does that show you back? I thought especially for this second category, everyone's looks with the exception of Mistress and maybe one other looked so last minute. Yeah. It's almost as if they had been told about that one the same day. Because, like, you can recreate the bag ball, and that's what you did. Listen, I like Marsha. I'm, I'm, I'm not anti-Marsha. I know I'm coming off that way, but that is internally what I'm dealing with my own struggle. And, you know, like, I told you I'm not on my meds right now. And But that's not good. Malaysia baby doll. Baby doll. Baby doll fox. She is doing hair ball. I think she looks really pretty. I appreciate the fun of playing with hair. It does look like a, a corset and a, see, there's not enough time on these. I want to see more. Yeah, visually, I wasn't like, I was gonna say I wasn't pleased. The hair is like, beautiful though. She has packed some really gorgeous hair. Well, that's what she said. She said, I'm a hairstylist, which is why I wanted to do the hair ball. Yeah. So I love the idea of it and paying homage to herself. Oh, oh, oh if I was gonna do the hair ball, I would have a giant blow up cat come out, like slide out from the side. And then I would tumble out of it covered in hair and I would be the hair ball. It'd be like that one guy from Charlie Brown who's got the dusty, stinky lines around him. Linus. No, he's the one with the blanket. Oh, Pigpen. 
Pig pen. P mm. for pig pen. Pig pen's basically just dirty linus. <laughs> <laughs> if we're gonna They're all the down. same. They're just exactly. accessorized differently. Dirty linus, clean linus. <laughs> <laughs> Spice linus. She is the ball ball. She's fuzzy ball. It's the same as what we've same. seen, but yeah. it looks good. Cool. I, mean, I mean, the writing cute. was on the wall. It's I think cute. she just wanted to The writing to was ball. on the ball. Like, well, exactly. I think she wanted to this just going. Yeah. I get it. Selena's titties did the money ball. Now, I remember the money ball being a huge deal in season three. And I like like this idea, but it didn't really. I agree with the judges. Didn't really pan out that great. Selena's continuing to just kind of do Selena, which I think is really fun to I watch think it's at a bar. Fit but issues. I think on this platform, it, this platform, this competition, it's I, not reading I, yet. I just don't think it's going to read. And I like when Michelle said, "I love your personality, but I also want to love your drag." And I have to be honest, I feel the same way. I think she started off so strong. Her entrance and her first runway, it really gave gave us a peek into who she was, her, her culture, astities. Her, her astities. We saw a lot of her astities, but then it's just kind of I don't I know want, it's a I style want, issue. I want more for her. I want more money to go to her so she can c get these looks. But I would 100% agree with Michelle that I, I'm obsessed with her personality. Yeah, I and love I her. love the idea. It's a palm tree, and she took the time to make those food stamps with her face on it. That's cool. Yeah, I liked the general idea. It just was the of execution. It. It's just the, yeah, there continues to be like a styling yeah. issue. Now, speaking of execution, Lucy Laduca and her bag thing, this is cute. It doesn't say bag to me. Doesn't it say I just found out about this this morning? Yeah, I mean, she and it's wore... cute. I would wear this, but I well, wouldn't no, call I this. I know, but like, that is a fast fashion dress that she put poop bags on. bags on her head. And I know, they are given a list of a hundred looks, and they have two days to do they it. They have two days. So, have... this is definitely one that she phoned in. It was funny to me that it felt like so many of them were phoned in. I'm wondering if that was a... They said, do this one, but don't Now, really but I don't think that's the case for Lux Noir London's hairball, because Amazing. she looked really gorgeous. Yeah. It's a similar idea that Malaysia had, but with a little more edit Fashion. to it. Sasha Colby was a dime bag. This didn't feel last minute to me either. This Loved. felt really cool. So cool. And I love, listen, I love Gummy. I just love that she's like there. I will say, well said, I'm sorry. I will say that tonight for Cocaine Bear, I'm going in fully sober. I'm not going to take a gummy because I want to be able to follow along with every plot point. I am going to get fucking ripped on Diet Pepsi. Which means you're not going to watch any of the movie because you're going to be constantly going to the bathroom. No, I brought my pee bags this time. If Can you I tell pee you something? in a bag <laughs> Can I while tell we you are watching something? Cocaine Bear, I promise you that this bear will be the least of your worries. <laughs> Can I tell you something? After you released the last episode, Meatball texted me and goes, what's the pee story? So I told her. I was peeing in these like camper pee bags. I didn't know that they didn't keep. And there was some <laughs> leakage into my laundry. Keep. I thought they would keep be sealed. And I just learned that t being on Spirit of Lactone makes you pee even more. And I was already going a lot. True, true. I will say I have heard from the research done Thank by, you. by our scientists that yes, the medicine you're on does make you pee more. And, and I was already, already peeing pee like you had really a lot. So now... <laughs> diabetes. You're diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> diabetes. So I told her. So I told Meeple. And she, she bought some. never responded. Would you respond to that? I think Meatball had respect for you. <laughs> <laughs> I bet she was going through a lot that day. I don't think Having she has any terms respect with it. for me anymore. Well, listen, not anymore. But listen, I've owned it. I've changed, I've addressed the situation. I'm not doing them anymore. I mean, I have some in case there's accidents. Well, you never know. You know what? You go on a cross-country journey. Did. Without, done. without pee bags. You've peed in a I bottle. Did. You've peed in a bottle. No, I have not. You have tiny in baby In your blood. entire life, you have never, never peed in a cup, a bottle, Well, yeah, anything. but that was because I was getting ready for An a piss alley. party play. And I needed to make sure that it was clear. Well, what's not clear is how Meatball feels about me now. <laughs> no, I think it is crystal clear. You are never coming back to Fat Slut. Oh, I'm so sorry. Sloppy God. seconds is not in your future. Right. Now you just have sloppy sacks of piss. <laughs> sorry. That's how you got it. No sloppy sacks. <laughs> sloppy sacks of piss. That's going to be our podcast. Sloppy no. sacks. Maybe sloppy sack. Toilet user, sloppy <laughs> sack, toilet user. I'd P listen to that. Pee time with Darby and Alexis. Okay, Anitra. 
Candy. Candy ball. What the fuck was that? I mean, she always looks gorgeous, but what I What was know. that? Taffy titties. It again got... Taffy titties is funny. But it didn't... It didn't. It didn't felt like you have three minutes to complete this challenge. Let's talk about this crystal ball. What they said that we were doing, everyone's gonna make their outfit. But like, these all looked made with just a few rhinestones put on. Is that what they did? They added rhinestones to already made gowns? Oh, I don't think so. Okay, I see Mistress being able to make this because it's beautiful. Well, and she kept getting help from Lucy. And then she was shitting on Lucy. And then again, we're getting, I hate this Lucy storyline. I know we said this last week. I think she's being reasonable. I think it is edited in a way or highlighted through in the a way that's that is weird. just like, yeah. let her have her feelings. But they um, also were being kind of funny about it. Like, oh, it was hilarious. Gaslighting. They were gaslighting. Well, and then Mr.'s like, who knows how to do this? Who knows how to dart? They're like, the bitch that you've been making fun of. <laughs> that she's been reading time. all day. <laughs> Mistress looks incredible. She looks beautiful. I liked it. Spice, what did you think of this? I'm going to be honest with you, I loved the top. I thought it was cute as well. I loved the top. I loved the top. I didn't think it was that bad. It wasn't, but again, is it so different from things we've seen from her before? No, of course no, not. No, she made the skirt long. That's all she did. Yeah. But did we see any elevation throughout this ball challenge from her? No. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. I loved this. Cute. Was it? Brooch pussy. Crystally. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't look, she made this? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Alicia Baby Doll. Baby Doll. Baby Doll Fox. She, uh, same ass same, gown. Same, same, and same. again, the edit. I wanted her to edit this down a little. Yeah. Okay, Selena's titties. This is a fit thing. It's, it's satin's hard. Satin's hard yeah. to work with. I also didn't quite understand the story that she was telling with this. Like, I didn't. Yeah, and the hair was rough for me. You know, I don't really like a flat to the head moment. Lucy Laduca, she did a runner up character, which I think was uncomfortable because she's been upset about being runner up this whole time. I liked it. Oh, okay. I like, I like that somebody took such a strong, I'm telling a story with the design challenge. Yeah. Everyone else, they just, you know, they, they just did, did something cool. But she's like, I'm a runner up. I don't know, I liked it. Yeah. I thought Carson's note about her mermaid, he didn't like the shape of her mermaid at the bottom. Weird. I thought it was weird. I thought that was such a weird note because it was well made. Mm. Okay, Lux Noir London. Now this is where I'm like, how did she make this? Denali. Denali taught her. What? Doesn't that look like Denali's promo look? I don't remember that. I don't remember. Denali was a drag queen from Chicago. I know she is. Oh. Did you see she's having sugar and spice doing ice skatings? Yeah, and obviously it's because we did it first and she was like, listen, IMHO is so funny. That's such a great idea. And I always said, this. I'm talking as Denali, I always said that Darby and Alexis were the sugar and spice of drag. But I just don't understand how she made this overnight. What is it? It's fashion. She looks incredible. Sasha Kolb. Love. Colby Carrington, a gorgeous. Gold, I love that she said everyone's doing silver, icy, let me do gold, warm, gorgeous. Yeah, she looks beautiful. And I love the shoes. Now, Anitra. Amazing. Incredible, and I loved it, especially when she turned around, so cool. But I don't understand how she made this in one night. Well, I guess I do. As someone who struggles t to make things in a timely manner, I can see how that's upsetting to you, to see that other people can just do what they have to do in a mm -hmm. timely fashion. You have grabbed onto my hand. I know, well, because now that you're smooth all the time, it's like touching a little baby. I got a new electric razor to help get better with my face. I have to be honest, I have not, no I know that it's something that you're self-conscious about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I think I it's definitely- I have not noticed your facial hair in a very long time. That's very kind. And now that you. all this hair is missing, I just, ha I assume that you're sick. Ah, uh, God, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, we have a top, we have a bottom. The top winner is, ba 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 I forget. Joni Mitchell. Ba ba da ba 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 Sasha, Sasha Colby. Colby, mother. Congratulations. She did, really did hit it uh, all, all of them. She hit them. She hit all she aspects hit of them. She hit them. She placed high because she wore high. I get it. 
think marijuana. Anitra and Lucy's second outfits really fucked them over. Cause I thought Anitra's final look was so outrageously incredible, but then I remembered her Laffy Taffy titties. Oh, her Laffy Taffy laughing. titties. But congratulations, Sasha, you deserved it. Bottom two are Spice and Selena. Writing is on the wall. We kind of knew what was gonna happen here. Yeah. And you know what? Have to lip sync. Spice goes into it, being Spice, by saying, I kind of know the words to this one because my sister and I did a TikTok to it. <laughs> and then I saw on Twitter somebody tracked down the TikTok and it's not even a lip syncing TikTok. It's near pum. It's just background music. Yeah, oh, it was yeah. near pum found it. It's just background music. They weren't even lip syncing Yeah, yet. yeah. And, and it showed off. It showed in, in her performance. I thought she was having fun. Well, that's what I'm saying is that she just went into it with like, she knew. She knew she was going home. She just went into it with like, yeah. uh, I'm just going to enjoy it and have fun. And I know you hate that about her, Try but I really enjoyed that. No, I'm over it. Now, I Selena, like I liked Selena's choice in this Interpretation. Well. She's she... always... There is one thing Selena will always you give you. You scoot over a little. I'm sorry. I don't know. I just like you so much. I keep I getting close to you. It's just making me really warm. <laughs> um, one thing Selena will always give you is a fucking performance. That is an Oscar-worthy actress right she, there. That is a... She will act the fuck out that of is a song. High, that, that's a high energy song. That's a song where you can kind of move Selena the body. Selena as titties Selena did the was thing. Like, Viola no, Davis, my I'm woman. Gonna, yeah, she said she was going to be serious in it. And I love when people take lighter sounding songs and create more Turn of a ballad. I head. thought that was so cool. Yeah, me too. And we also haven't acknowledged yet Angela Bassett did the thing that did happen. Angela week. Bassett did the thing. I want to say, she's our goddamn queen. Okay, she won an Oscar for West Side Story, and now she did whatever that was. She deserves nothing but praise, adoration, and idolatry. Angela Bassett is iconic. An award and saying, "Well, I guess I did the thing." She knows. We wrapped it up. She knows. I think it was. Evan Have you ever Ross seen Nine One One? We wrapped it up. That Have you was ever the seen Nine One One? Curtis just had an audition. It's a really for one good them, show for the Lone Star. One, it's kind of like one. Murder She Wrote, where every no, time, every time true. it all gets figured out in the end, unless like someone dies or whatever. You know what? 911 Lone Star is fun because there's one episode where a woman goes to Texas. A woman and her husband, they're at dinner and they check the baby monitor to see the baby's okay. There's a snake in the baby's crib, crawling up to it. Well, it's Can't get hold baby of the babysitter. Now. They get 911 Lone Star over there. The basement had opened up and a family of rattlesnakes crawled through the cement because there was a shift in the tectonic plates or whatever. Heard of it. And bitten the babysitter and was going for the baby. The baby's fine. All of it's fine because it's a TV show. I do enjoy that storyline. I do enjoy the, the sheer audacity that they have to write these things. And there's I was gay. There's well, two gay obviously guys. there's, I mean, it's 2023. Everything's gay now. I went downstairs the other day. Curtis was watching Lone Star, 911 Lone Star because he has an audition for it. So he's like, I gotta get the, I gotta get the feel of it. So I'm like, oh, what's happening? And he was like, some frogs are falling from the sky and that frog fell in his throat and I was choking on a frog. <laughs> Which is very biblical, so it's very kind. I'm very into it. But spoiler, Spice loses and Spice goes home. Spice is the frog. Of, trots trots off. She, she gets trapped in this man's throat. No, she trots off. She does her thing. So happy to have had her and Sugar on you know the season. You know what? I really I, am. I've had Didn't opinions. Didn't expect me to enjoy I've it. had thoughts. But ultimately, now that she's gone, I like her. She's fun. <laughs> That's how I approach funerals. That's all I say. I say, you know what? She wasn't that bad. Now that he's gone, overall, was this episode bawling for you? It was rolling right along at a nice pace. Mm. Sudden stops, a couple times. Sometimes I felt a little deflated, but overall, bouncy fun time. Yeah, I do love a crystal moment. I do think it's a lot to ask them to do a crystal look. Overnight. Overnight, like as a design challenge. Yeah. You know, when we've had such iconic looks as Shea Denali. Oh. Shea Coulee's All Stars promo look. Denali. Oh my fucking God. Chandelier. All right, well. <laughs> If you enjoyed this episode, make sure you hit that subscribe button and, of course, the notification bell. And then go over to patreon.com slash IMHO the show and find out what we got cooking in there. We also are both on Cameo, so if you'd like a little message from us to a loved one, a hated one, a family member who might be both, go ahead and hit us up there. Or you can get a Shamio, which is a message from both of us.
JB wants a Shamio. JB wants a Shamio. I'm each other show.com. Click Shamio. And don't forget, you can find our merch at dragqueenmerch.com. Yes, we have brand new merch on Drag Queen Merch. Thank you again, Bible Girl. I just found out Bible Girl and I have been texting. She doesn't want your number. And she lives in LA now. Why did I not know that? She's been in LA since 2018. I thought she was New York girl forever. Oh. Yeah, she and I are going to go get lunch and coffee and, like, hang out sometime. Well, I can come. You just make it a Friday. It sounds so complicated. Well, she's only free Thursday from 8 to 6. That was supposed to make me feel bad, but the fact that you know my work schedule makes me feel good. Well, I know when I need to be on alert not to answer my phone. <laughs> <laughs> you did call me the other day when I was so, so tired. I had slept so bad, and... You, when you call me on a work break, you're usually in such a good mood because you're out in the world and you're moving your body. And I was like, if I answer the phone right now and I'm all tired and she's like, what's up? I was like, I'm gonna end it. So I, I left you a voicemail. I know I don't listen to those. Do you wanna play it now? Should I? I don't listen, to, listen, listen. I don't listen to voicemails. I don't remember. I don't what I they're fun to listen to. I just feel like it's- Mine are always fun. Okay, here we go, Friday. 39 seconds. Not too long. Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Hello, my rag. I'm now. This is just your friendly neighborhood Alexis and Lindsay. Hi. And how are you? And what are you doing? I've actually been up for hours because uh, now I wake up early. And I just wanted to see how my, my friend was. <laughs> but um, and now I think I'm going to make a, a delivery driver um, get me junk food in this horrible weather. I think that would really bring the spirits up around here. Bye! No, that wasn't funny. That was 10.16 in the morning. Do you understand how frustrating that would be? If I answer the phone and you start singing that toad thing from the WB. If you'd answered, I wouldn't have sang. Are there more? this one? Hmm. That's interesting. You know, because I only have a limited amount of time to talk to my friends now. So, and they don't answer. I, I, I just thought I was just never going to talk again. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I want to see if you look. I it. never leave you voicemails. Hold on. You know I don't do voicemails. Hold on. Okay, can you see how obsessed Walgreens is with me? Did you shit in my car? <laughs> Did you take a shit in my car? My husband called what? me from work. It seems he's covered in shit. <laughs> and he traced it back to our car. Now I know I didn't shit in the car. I shitted when I got home. Like a woman. But you, you shit in my car. <laughs> Oh, wow. I never thought I'd see the day when I could finally confront you about shitting in my car. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are. You, red-handed, my car, shit seated. It's a perfect, perfect storm. <laughs> finally bring me down the bunch. Why did I call you? I don't know. That's <laughs> January 6th, 2023. January 6th. I was going through a lot. <laughs> okay. Well, we have to go de-drag because we have tickets to Cocaine Bear. So we are going to go get ready for the movie. Talk about bags. Yeah. So we will see you um, in hell. Go see Cocaine Bear. Not sponsored. And remember... Mm.